Hello, this is a screencast of uh, the Ruby shell. And right now I'm standing in uh, Z shell and uh, running R shell, Ruby shell for the first time. This is what comes up. It's a help screen that uh, tells you something about R shell and how it works. And it gives you a very simple prompt at the bottom there, which is red. And when I press the enter key, it will change the prompt to something more usable. And now we're officially into Ruby shell. Now I can clear the screen with control L and then I can start doing my work. Let's say I CD and then I tab complete and it will show a set of possible tab completions. And I can do down and look at what I have here and it will tab complete to whatever. Let's say we go into my philosophy folder. I press enter and you can see that it uh, becomes orange, which means it is a valid path. If I change this, it's not a valid path anymore. I can tab complete this. It only matches this philosophy folder. If I uh, go down to only two, then it will tab complete to other things, but uh, let's leave it at philosophy. I enter and we can see that I'm into the philosophy folder, right? I can uh, press enter and it will automatically uh, list the files in that folder using colors and uh, uh, the, well, it, it is a, an alias for ls minus minus color minus f. You can look that up in the man page of ls. I can create other nicks, what uh, is what we call an alias in Ruby shell. And this is because uh, Ruby has a reserved word called alias, so we can't use that. If I want to create another nick, let's say I want to uh, do l equal to less. So let's see if we can do that. Colon, nick, anything that uh, is a Ruby word or uh, an R shell a special command starts with a colon. Colon means you enter the Ruby world. Nick, and then I do L equals less to make this easier. And then it updates the, the configuration file, the .rshrc. It does that every time you do something that it needs to save. If you don't want to save anything that you've done, you just press control C and you are out of R shell. If you press control D, it will save the configuration file before it exits. Now let's look at uh, what Nix we have. Colon, Nick, question mark. And here it says the command Nix is ls equals ls minus minus color minus f and l equals less as we saw, right? So let's do ls pipe to l. Now we should get uh, less with all the files that we have uh, piped through to it. And yes, we did that. And there's a lot of stuff you can do with, uh, with our shell. Uh, obviously there is the command completion, um, or tab completion, we can do ls minus, and then we can tab complete, and you will see every possible switch or option for ls. So you can see that. If you do control G, you get out of it, and uh, there is no more tab collision. If you, you can now see here that uh, there is a shadowy command there, and if I go right, it accepts that, which is basically the first hit for those three first letters in the history. I can go up in history like this. I can go down in history. I can search history by doing shift tab. And then you will see I can pick from my history here. Or I do control G now to get out of it. I can just press the first three small letters and then it will give me the first match in the history. So if I do Nick and then space, it will give me the match that matches this uh, set of uh, characters. 
And then I can do right and I can start editing this thing if I want to, or I can go down in history. So now we are back on the clean prompt. There is a few integrations that could be useful. Let's say I want to go somewhere and I'm not really sure uh, about the file name. I can do F for fuzzy search and you will have here my uh, fuzzy search from this part. I can do will, of course, and then we will get my uh, essay on will. And if I choose this one and do enter, I will find myself in that directory where that file is. Let's see, do we have on will? Yes, we do, will.pdf. Uh, if I press just the tilde, I will go straight back to my home directory. If I do cd minus, I will jump back to the previous directory just as with z shell and bash, but you can do it simpler than that. You can just do a minus and go pop back and forth. There is a history of where you have been, where you have cd'd to in, uh, inside of our shell. And if I do the, the hash, then it will show me the past directories where I've been. If I want to now jump to the philosophy folder, I can do, for instance, seven and then enter and I'm back into the philosophy. So you can use that as a sort of simple jumping around uh, in, the, in the past 10 directories that you have been to back and forth. Uh, there is also another interesting integration, of course, to my file manager called RTFM. You just press R and it will open the RTFM file manager and you can go anywhere. Let's go to my coaching folder and you will now see the, the files here. If I exit RTFM, then our shell will find itself in that directory where I was last in RTFM. Another integration is to my programming language called XRPN. If I start with an equal, I can then enter a full program of our uh, XRPN. And XRPN is a stack-based programming language like uh, PostScript or Forth, uh, or the RPN programming language of the old HP calculators, which is where I got the idea for XRPN from. So let's do something simple. We'll do three and you separate the, uh, the commands by a comma, three, comma, uh, five, comma, multiply. And you will see that it comes out with x equals 15. x is the, the basic registry of uh, XRPM. You can do much more involved stuff than that, obviously. I go up to edit this thing. Let's do um, then divided by, and then do the sine function of that, and then do, um, one over x and you will find that it is a different answer and you can do all kinds of loops and everything but obviously you can do simple mathematics like this. So those are the basic integrations to uh, the fuzzy search and to RTFM and to the XRPN programming language. Obviously you can also do all kinds of stuff with uh, Ruby by doing the colon so it's integrated into Ruby uh, backend. Uh, and here you can do, let's say, just do something simple, puts um, hello world. We always need to do the hello world and it puts the hello world. So you have the whole world, the universe of Ruby at your fingertips. Now there is uh, also the, the, uh, the highlighting of all commands. So let's say I do, as you can see, ls, which is now a, a nick. If I do something which is not a nick, it will be a slightly different color. Let's just uh, clear the screen so we're up here again to have some screen space to work on. Uh, we can uh, pipe that to 
We could pipe it to L, of course, which is our nick for, for less, but we'll do write out the less completely, and you'll see there is a slightly different color there. LS is a nick, less is a complete command. L in itself is the same uh, color as LS because we have one nick, which is LS, and one which is L. Um, and as I said, you will find that if you do, uh, let's say, two lengths of the pool, it's a very cool um, uh, book by Simon Hartley. He is a famous uh, mental trainer in uh, the UK. So if we press tab here, you will see that it matches something. So anything that matches in the file or directory space is in orange. All these colors, by the way, you can change them. You can change them in uh, the uh, configuration file. Let's go into the configuration file and see how that goes. Vim, obviously, dot rshrc. Now, let's see if, uh, no, it doesn't match because we're not in the home directory. Obviously, we need to go to the home directory. Here we go. And then we do vim dot rshrc. Now it matches. Aha, so the file is there. And you can see here that uh, first there is uh, the prompt. Uh, it says the numbers in parentheses are 256 color codes. The dot C parentheses is a string extension to color text in the terminal. Add dot B for bold and dot I for italics. So here we have the prompt, which is equal to the user at the node, meaning here guide at Yuba. Yuba is the god of fun in my role playing game world. So uh, I like to have fun with my computer programming and stuff. And then it's color coded with the color 46 plus the colon and then the color code 255, which is white. And then, uh, yeah, it's red for the, for the path that I'm in, basically. So all of these, uh, you can also do not only the actual color codes, the numbers, uh, but you can also uh, change this into these presets here. And you can change these presets to any color code you want. So the prompt for basic prompt is red 196. Uh, the color for uh, any command that is matched in the system is 48. The color for any nick is uh, 51. And the color for any global nick, global nick is something I haven't talked about. Global nick is uh, you know, a nick can be ls or l as we have seen. Those are command nicks. Um, but the general nick can be anything. It doesn't have to be a command. It can be a, a path in the in your directory. It can be a, a server that you ssh to or any such thing. So that can be matched anywhere, not only at the beginning or after a pipe. And then we can uh, change the color of a valid path, you know, the orange that we saw when you match a file or directory. And any switches, uh, which is um, uh, seen when you do minus, ls minus something, then that little minus becomes a greenish uh, kind of color. You can change that to anything you want. Uh, the violet or magenta that you saw when we did the tab uh, for tab completion, that can be changed. And the others that were grayish uh, or darker, those can be changed. And also the, the, the timestamp slash command, which is always given after you put uh, a command onto our shell. So all these things can be changed. The nicks are updated every time you uh, go out of uh, our shell, the genic also, and also the history. Here you can see the history. Let's go out of this and we're back here. You can obviously uh, do stuff like uh, history to see your whole history. Here we go. Here's the whole history for the session. And um, we can do, we can change that history. We can delete it. RM history. Bang. And now there is no history. So if I do history now, there is only the last command, which is history. So this is basically what I wanted to show you. Uh, lots of other stuff, but uh, have a look at um, uh, the readme file on uh, GitHub. 
uh, it's continually updated and pushing more and more features into this as I can come up with features to put into it. I love doing that, just as with the RTFM file manager, which has been uh, in uh, development for the past three years. There's always another feature that can come up. And if you have an idea for me as to what feature or improvement I can do to uh, Ruby shell, please do drop me a note at g at lisenna dot com. And if you want to have a look at my other work, you can obviously look at that on the GitHub, or you can just go into lisenna.com and you will find my one page books and uh, all my uh, the music I create and the artwork I do and everything else. I just give away everything for free and do not worry about any license or any copyright whatsoever. I just like my work to be used by others. So that is what I have. Thank you very much for attending this little screencast.